Hi everybody, this is Frog Snack, and welcome to a Let's Build. This one is not related to any of my challenges or anything that's currently going on in one of my games. This is just a moment of inspiration that I had when I was driving home from work. There are a million and a half little auto shops, auto repair shops, in any neighborhood ever, and it never seems to translate over to The Sims. So there's a few things, that, buildings that you'll never see in The Sims, and you know, it comes down to whether or not you can play the buildings, whether or not you can actually use them, as to why you would want them in your game in the first place. So I think EA and Maxis, and however you consider them, I mean, most people call them EA, I think, by now, um, you know, I think they try to make it as realistic as possible, but if there's not additional gameplay to the lots, then the question becomes, you know, is it worth their effort to go ahead and make one? Now, this auto repair shop, you can code it as a hangout very easily. It's actually already up on my Sims 3 store, um, you know, in the exchange, so of course it's free. It does require the fixer-upper car that you see there um, that I'm building around it, and you don't need it, though. I mean, if you absolutely don't want it, um, or you don't want that gameplay, or you don't want to download something because you do have to get the Roaring Heights neighborhood to get it, then don't. All I can tell you is don't. If you see right now, I'm just setting up the outside facade of the building, uh, but it's like a little brickwork garage that also was going to have a little bar on the other side. Um, but in reality, when you go to these places, and my neighborhood mechanic is a great example of this, they're usually just full of junk. It's a couple guys working. You know, they've worked the same way for years. They're, they don't need to have a clean environment because they deal with um, just mechanic mechanical devices and oil and greasy rags everywhere and that sort of thing. So um, I basically made um, kind of a little beaten up looking neighborhood garage that could easily go anywhere. So like I said, if you're interested, go ahead and download it. It's it's already free. You just have to sign up for The Sims 3 store, which I, th I think was pretty quick or most people already have that login info. So um, because it's been up for so long, you might as well just grab it. Like I said, there's pretty much this car here and I think there's a few things from other, I'm trying to think, expansions other than um, Nightlife, and it's not even Ambitions, it was Nightlife and um, one of the stuff packs, which I think was, uh, I keep thinking, wanting to say Diesel, but it wasn't the Diesel stuff, I don't own that one, so it's the other one that was, uh, do, 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 gosh, sorry, when I remember it, I'll post it, so here I'm just junking up the floor a little bit, if you can see, giving it a little bit of a worn look. Um, but the beauty of buildings like this in a neighborhood is that they just add the authenticity. So even if you don't want to use it as a hangout, it might be perfect. Um, I, I think this would look great in Bridgeport or, you know, in a, an island setting anywhere, really, that has cars that need to be repaired. There's tons of cars in The Sims game, so for the sake of your story, you might want to get it and just try it out. I did play test it. It works fine. There's a lot of little spaces, but I didn't have errors with Sims uh, not being able to get around it. You know, they don't um, they don't get stuck too much because there are a couple of doors or once they get in there, there's enough space for them to move around, which I was quite frankly surprised. Um, I did have to create, the, of the two parking lots on the inside, the one on the left will park neighborhood cars when somebody drives over with theirs. The one on the right will not because for some reason when I created a parking lot or a little parking space, the fixer upper car um, stacked with it and so the people were able to put a car on on top of the fixer upper car and then you couldn't fix it <laughs> so but it is like a, a little rebuildable car so this would be a great home business for your sims also so keep that in mind and if you have any other ideas for local neighborhood lots that things that you would just like to have authenticity in your game I get inspired by things like this and I would not mind trying to make one um, I'd much rather do something like this than just make a typical, you know, like there's a neighborhood pool in every neighborhood. Those are easy to make. They're You can be really creative, but it doesn't add something extra that's not currently in your game. And that's what I'd love to try to do. Um, another thing that's on my list, which I really haven't tried to set up yet, but it, for the longest time I've wanted to have one, would actually be like a funeral home. Um, it seems like a depressing topic, and yet there's so many funeral homes, and it just would add authenticity to a neighborhood. Um, I wouldn't mind trying to make my own little hospital for the game, but that's maybe not so necessary, right? So if you guys have any ideas, go ahead and send them my way. Um, this is the sort of thing that gets me distracted from everything else I'm supposed to be doing, and I just enjoy playing the game and building something nice, and that's what happened with this. So I really hope you enjoy it. 
Um, this is, I think, another five times speed build, and um, just was trying to get the brick colors right, and it came out really cute. It actually ended up looking like brick that had been painted over before, so I thought the effect of the wall was great. Um, again, the really sturdy doors, that there's nothing that's supposed to be pretty in here. Now that we, I did add props to that small room and kind of created a reception area, which is nice, but then on the garage side, it's... Um, yeah, it's very much everything's very stable and there's just garbage everywhere and I loved it. So <laughs> it was it was pretty close. I think my neighborhood uh, garage, the one that I've gotten my car fixed at, is more more messy than this. And there's certainly not like a nice, clean, pristine appearance. Uh, sometimes if your car is newer and you go get work done at a dealership, you'll have these nice, beautiful white rooms. But, you know, if you're trying to save money, and my neighborhood guy is great, he just... Oh man, he will not give you a certificate that he's holding your car or anything. You just have to remember you left it with him. Like, <laughs> he just, he's been at this for so long. And he's done work um, just as a courtesy that do doesn't earn him money. I've tried to pay him for just helping me. I I've had a couple recalls on my, my car. I have a Saturn and it had some recalls. And I love Saturn, but, you know, I'm going to my neighborhood guy to try to find out if he can handle these recalls because he's just been so helpful in the past. And he ends up like calling a few of his friends who are mechanics and finding, you know, and it ended up having to go through a dealership. And so I kind of saw both sides. And I really, it, as messy as it was and as, uh, and, you know, I mean, he really does things his own way and he, he's kind of gruff. But he, he was really so much more helpful than the dealership at the end of the day, you know. I go to the dealership and I have to sign a waiver that they, like, get my car if I'm not there in 30 days or whatever. You go to this neighborhood mechanic and he just doesn't give you anything, but you'll get your car back. And he'll also be calling his friends and rearranging. He wrote down all of the uh, the recall data for me so that when I went to the dealership and they didn't believe me, I had the numbers to prove everything that tied into my VIN and he really saved me a lot of time. So, you know, I love places like this where you actually have that sense of community once again that it's difficult to get. The larger a business becomes, the more the community kind of vanishes. And so I'm trying to help you guys have a sense of community in your, uh, in your game because that's part of the reason we play sometimes. You know, I think we need a little bit more player made buildings and things that um, add the authenticity for the, the feel that you want from each game and especially if you're doing something different you know we don't all play this game in the same way everybody has their own habits and from watching let's play videos online I've learned that so much about everyone that we all have something we go to directly I really like to test the limits of the game and you'll see that in my gameplay I want to make sure that my game can withstand me you know and so if it, uh, if it can or if it can't, that's how I'm enjoying it. And some people want to take the game and play it exactly as, you know, as it's supposed to be and create a little family. And some people want to uh, drown everybody in the pool, you know. So, <laughs> but it's one of those things where you get something different out of it. And yet you should, should still have plenty of little options like this that can kind of fit anywhere and provide a little bit of extra reality to that. Because that's what this experience is like. Um, I did find out from, it was another creator online who had mentioned that this game was originally an architectural game first and foremost, and that they sort of added the Sims in afterwards. And you can see that when you build more, you can really see that a lot of the options for the game are centered around building. And so to have things like rabbit holes in The Sims 3, okay, it might be nice for them, it might be simple, there's a, you know, a facade for the building, but I would much rather take the rabbit hole and stick it in a basement and put another building on top of it, which, by the way, is easy enough to do, so that it looks how I want. You know, I made this really great little community um, grocery store, and I just made it look like a little simple box with like a fire outside, little fireplace, and some ruins, so it, it was for my test of time challenge. It was their first little grocery store. I couldn't use a big modern building for, uh, you know, like eight generations or nine generations of Sims, and actually more like 12, because it, it would have had to be Roman modern, and then... <laughs> from there you know it can't be modern for quite a while so for the way that I was playing it just didn't work and it makes more sense to make your own so um, again any comments or ideas are appreciated so this is me uh, at the moment just creating a little kind of a backspace this would be great if you needed an alleyway too you have that little side bar on the side of this building where you could just butt it up against something else over in Bridgeport as an example um, and I just sort of created a little dump in the back for tires and things like that. I did, I think, get around to adding windows, but they were of the tiny type, and I had a bit of trouble with the roof. 
So that's what you're going to see getting into this is it just messing with the roof ended up being uh, the time of my life. <laughs> the little uh, eaves in the front just sort of overlapped and it didn't quite work. Um, I do have this currently submitted on Mod The Sims, but I don't know if uh, they're going to approve it or not. I've submitted a couple buildings to them and I always get frustrated with their submission process, which is why I end up with more things on my exchange. The other videos, by the way, that I had created in advance of this one, um, updating the equestrian floodgate apartments and things like that, those are all on my exchange now too. So I created links in the bottom of those videos so that you could just go over there. And again, this video will have a link to the overall, um, what do they call the dashboard that's over there? So my, um, my creator studio, I think is what it's called technically. So if you want to go check out the other videos or the other um, lots, sorry, in my studio, it's going to include several ones that I've created videos for now. So I have updated that. There's also a really cute little row house that I made a long time ago called, I think, Lippiat Lane or something, but just kind of an apartment style, but for one family. So a tall um, and narrow building, which is nice. You know, I live in... Um, in a city that has a lot of those old, tall, narrow buildings from when they first started setting up neighborhoods, like little cookie cutter, you know, same house everywhere, maybe a slightly different facade. So there's some cute options up there. Um, you can tell I'm just kind of working on the decorations for now, and I think half of this video or half of the build was me trying to figure out what goes in the space. And uh, I think it came out really great. There is going to be a little, it's a workman's station. It looks like a book, uh, like a bookshelf, but it really doesn't function as one. There are a few items. The workman's station comes with uh, the Stones Throw greenhouse that is a Sims 3 store content, just like the car is th Sims 3 store content. And then along with uh, Roaring Heights, there also was a replica, it's called of a, um, and I think I had to get it out of buy debug, so it wasn't even a normal purchase item. So I went into buy debug and found a parking meter, and so that I used for decoration in the small side. But without the, if you don't want the store content, you're gonna miss a parking meter, a little workbench that kind of looks like it has um, some tools and things, but also books, which is nice, it's pretty cute, and uh, you're gonna miss the fixer-upper car. So if you don't have those things and you download it from the Sims 3 store, you're still going to be able to use um, let's see, there's a dartboard, uh, and I don't remember that little gas, um, gas pump that I put in there. I think that's a part of the stuff pack, so you're okay with that. Um, but yeah, so nightlife, of course, is where you get the bar from, and a lot of these other items were just the tool set there that you see against the wall. I don't know about that sign. I think that sign's also from the stuff pack. So, um, yeah, that's where it is. It's mostly from a stuff pack, and then, of course, from... Uh, nightlife, which created a really cool, I don't know if you guys have ever used them in your builds, but a little set of duct work that ends up in the, the roof over on the side. And I love the ducts, but when you go and play in game, you end up seeing them everywhere. So you have to place them kind of carefully. So I messed around with that a little bit too. Um, and this worked out really nicely as I think it was just visitors allowed when I play tested it and the second my sim went in there were about five other sims showed up so I have no idea what visitors allowed means to the game to which uh, sims show up and which traits they have to have you can also call it a hangout but I did not test it as a hangout and this chair was awesome I just had so much fun with it look <laughs> I found out that there was a slot on the chair and I don't know why they don't do that because I've seen so many user made like pillows and things that float in midair or they, you know, there's no chair slot for a pillow, which just would make so much more sense. So that's what you end up with is a whole lot of detail and extra things for your sim to look at. Um, for additional gameplay, like I said, there's the bar. There is this little desk here that you can have your sim use. There is a dartboard. I think I ended up putting a video game machine in the corner. So that's another thing um, like you'll find at the corner laundromat. There will be um, a one or two little video games that you can play where your laundry is getting done. So I might attempt a laundromat too. I, I think I know you have to have, uh, is it ambitions for that? I don't really like laundromats, um, but they're, they might be fun to make. So it might be one of those things that to just go in and to try it. And then if you have any weird lots, anything that, thing that you've made, let me know in the comments or even link it below. I'm I've said this before, I don't mind if you guys, you know, piggyback on my videos and add something at the bottom 
to advertise your own video for the most part. You know, if you do it every time, it might be annoying. But in this case, if you have a video that ties in, or if you have a little lot that you created that you think creates the same effect where you get a little bit of form and function and it just adds so much reality to the game, then share it share it and we can all benefit from that and if I really like it then I might just you know help you promote it a little bit here and there if I can so if it's something that I use I'm very honest about that and I'll come out and, and say hey I use this and it was great so um, after that I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the build I've talked long enough um, I hope you choose to get the neighborhood garage for your sims because again it's just awesome it does help if you have the stuff pack um, that's where a lot of this clutter came from if you don't have it, I'm sure you can still find clutter, but I think most of the other things are like kind of this bathroom cabinet I'm coloring. It's bathroom clutter stuff. So you can be creative, but that's what really what made the the lot. And so I would recommend that you have those two, the expansion and then additionally the stuff pack for this. So um, after that, I'm going to go ahead and sign out and let you guys enjoy the rest of the build. Thank you so much and have a great day.